Greetings and felicitations once again fellow modelers. Here we are, first movie, dealing primarily with electronics. Now I wanted to do just electronics for the next couple of weeks, but I've just got too much going on. So I'm going to be showing you little bits of this and that, along with a main focus of electronics from the beginning until you can create your own circuit. Well, make your own circuit. I'll provide you with the schematic for a couple of circuits, actually. All right. Um, I've got my B9 environmental robot on the way. I've got electronics ordered for the sound activation circuit, which I'm putting together. And I've got a couple of other things coming. So the next couple of videos should prove to be interesting. I'm going to show you right off the start a circuit that you can get cheap. You just got to make a couple of minor modifications. Um, I'm going to show some work on a new project, a 1, 120 scale refit enterprise. Yes, once again, the refit. Refit enterprise bridge and BC deck. I'm working on that and my buddy John just sent me down a, four pieces of the BC deck from the primary ring all the way up. I've already been working on the bridge, so I'm going to show some of that. Um, going to show some stuff out in the garage. Going to do a little quick review part two of the Mobius Model C view. Great ship. Love it. Um, going to be a lot of different things thrown in, but the primary focus is going to be electronics. Excuse me. I'm going to be running fiber optics. I've already been running fiber optics. I'm going to be doing some detail work and I'm going to work on the Equinox and show the Equinox. I'm wanting to get the Equinox done and into silicone as soon as possible. So I'm juggling a lot of things right now. I also have to show an update on the studio scale Galileo that I'm building for my buddy Steve. Anyway, so much for the intro. Let's get to it. Okay, here we have some basic electronic symbology. I'm going to explain each piece to you one at a time. All right, this is the symbol for a DC power supply or battery. The plus is on the larger section here, the minus on the smaller, okay? Current flow is from positive to negative. However, because of the way the circuit is set up, current flow will go this way. Now, this is the symbol for a resistor. Resistors in series with current flow showing. Resistors in parallel. Here's a capacitor. This line here is always negative. Just like the diode, this line here is always negative. So this always points to the negative. Here's the symbol for ground. Transistor symbols. This shows emitter base collector. Where the current comes in, goes down through the emitter. Either way, it comes out of the emitter. It emits a signal. So here's your base collector emitter. The top leg of this transistor is the emitter. This is where you get your power out or your amplification, depending on the type of transistor that it is. It could be either or both. Here are the IC symbols. This is an older symbol for logic, as in Boolean algebra. This is the IC symbol currently used today in the IC package. This always points towards the top and this dot always points towards pin number one on the pinout of that chip. This is a 55 timer. Now, here's yet another symbol that you might see for an IC chip. Once again, this dot always points towards number one, which is usually the voltage in or signal in. Now, that's just some basic schematic diagram symbology. 
but take notes on this stuff. I went through it fast, but I showed you current flow. Current flow is always from plus to minus, positive to negative. Series, parallel. Later we'll put some of these things into application by making a couple of small blinker circuits. Then we'll make a couple of small fader circuits and we'll use a resistor and a capacitor to get our RC time constant which will control the rate of fade on your fader circuit. Alright, there we go. Electronics 101, part one. Okay, here we have some more basic electronic stuff, okay? Resistance or resistors are measured in ohms. This is the symbol for ohms, the omega symbol. Capacitors are measured in capacitance, as in farads, microfarads, nanofarads, picofarads, etc. Transistors are measured in how much they amplify a signal or the beta of the signal. You're never going to deal with that in, ba in making basic electronic circuits, so I'm not even going to get into it. Okay, it's just irrelevant to fill anyone's head up with stuff that they don't need to know to create a basic circuit. And in voltage, it's always volts DC. The input to virtually every electronic circuit is volts DC. Okay, you may have a 120 volt rectifier prior to the actual circuit, but the circuit has a DC voltage setting that it is designed around. Remember that. Here's our 1120 bridge, which is going to be part of the bridge BC deck diorama. And we may come up with a couple of shuttles and maybe some little 120th scale figures. Now if you look at this, it looks like a bridge, but it's just about as big as my hand. As you can see there, it's just about as big as my hand. So that's a pretty good sized bridge. And it's going to look really sweet all painted up with the blinkies in it. And I'll show that as soon as I can get to it. As you can see here, I've got a little bit of cleanup work left to do. I've got to do some work underneath. As you can see, there are three millimeter holes just waiting for LEDs. So this is already set up and ready to go to light. And this whole thing, along with the BC deck, when it's done, will be offered as a kit, one of a kind. And of course, I'm going to send out a couple of free promos. Woohoo! Here's another little something I pulled out of mothballs. My buddy Bob from the Navy got a hold of me via Facebook. So I thought, you know, I'll go ahead and pull this out of mothballs and get back to work on it. So I already had this primer. I already had the main superstructure and hull together. So I just started taping it off and painting it for the water line and prepping it to get ready to add some details. So there'll be some more of this later on. And here we have the USS Equinox, a Nova class starship, 677 scale in scale with a Revell monogram Voyager. Now, uh, I've added some more detail to this. I'm going to be adding even more. I've got to go over this and sand it lightly several places with some fine 600 grit sandpaper. Take some acetone and a couple of Q-tips and clean up a couple of spots. Then I'm going to be showing the detail that I've added and more detail on the bottom. I really need to get this done. I've got to add some detail to the bridge and the BC deck, to the back, to the spine. And I've got to add, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm probably going to add the escape shuttle uh, latches or hatches, whatever. So, so much for that. On to the next thing. Here we have the B9 robot kit. Nice model. Awesome model. Yet another Mobius Models awesome model. I cannot say enough about Mobius models. I guess you figured that out over the last few movies because I gotta tell you they're knocking it out of the park. 
I looked at all the parts. All the parts look, look clean, crisp, good parts, rubber parts, dyed in the right color. Nice, nice touch. Plenty of clear parts. I mean, plenty of clear parts. They didn't go stingy on the clear parts like some other model kit producers I know. <laughs> Directions are right up front. Step by step, easy to follow, clear, easy to understand. Awesome. This is gonna make for an awesome model. I mean, really. I've got the electronics kit and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. Now I matched this up to uh, the Japanese version that was sold a few years back. I picked up this model for $34. Think about that, Polar Lights, 34 bucks. Okay? And that's a, roughly half the price of what I paid for the Japanese one eight years ago, six or eight years ago. Good price, good kit, lots of clear parts, easy to light. This thing's going to be awesome. Awesome kit. Can't say enough about it. Thank you, Mobius. Well, I pulled most of the parts out to get a really good look at the ship. And I would suggest pre-assembling it and taping it all together all of the main parts of the main hull frame and assembly there was uh, a little warpage and some fit issues but nothing really bad with something this long you've really got to kind of expect that simply because I mean it's almost 40 inches long and when the plastic comes out of the injection molding machine, it's going to cool. There's going to be some minor warpage. So I suggest pre-fitting and taping everything before you really get down to the real nitty-gritty. Now, as I, you know, everything I've looked at, it looks like a really fine kit. I've looked at all the detail parts. I didn't take everything out of the bag, but I checked everything against the directions, and everything looks good. The only thing is, is I thought for sure this came with... Uh, flying sub and a couple of other little things looks like I'm gonna to have to buy an additional kit oh well such as life I just wish they would quit doing that I don't care if it's Mobius or polar lights or whoever if you're gonna make a kit and have all this stuff why not put it in the kit oh well anyway I think it's a great kit still think it's a great kit Here we have the Mobius Models Sea View Flying Submarine. Nice kit, yet another fine kit by Mobius Models. Once again, I can't say enough about them. Picked this kit up for about 10 bucks, plus two bucks for shipping. So between the $48 Sea View and this kit, I've spent just about 60 bucks, maybe a little extra for shipping. And that's not a bad deal for a 39 inch Sea View and this submarine, the flying sub, and it's got the other little one-man or two-man sub, and the diving bell. All of this in one little kit. Great kit. Can't wait to build it. I'm going to have to build a bigger one of these. I can see that right now. I'm already aching to build a bigger one. Anyway, there you go. Check it out. And here we have Jimmy Flintstone's Frankenstein model I love it this is Herman Munster from the Munsters and he's obviously been drinking and he's flipping Lily or someone the bird I love Jimmy Flintstone's kits if you've got a sense of humor you'll love Jimmy Flintstone's kits look up Jimmy Flintstone models on the internet I've got all the base coats on this I had to fix his uh, head his head he really literally lost his head so I gotta go, to, go in there, do some putty work, and then go back and do some detail paint and clean this up. It's a little rough looking, but I'll get it lined out. Anyway, Jimmy Flintstone. Look what I've got here. Guess what? Sound to light electronics kit, okay? I am going to show you in the next video exactly how to build this kit. While I'm working on the Polar Lights refit and I'm working on the two original series ships, I'm going to show you how to build this kit. And guess what? 
it didn't cost $150. It didn't cost $75. It didn't cost $50. It didn't cost $30, $20. It cost 12 bucks. $12, people. Okay, and here it is. This is what you need to get. The Velman Sound to Light Unit. Look it up online. They're cheap and they're easy to build. Now, this is an additional unit that I want to show you. This is a sound generator kit. Well, really, what it is is it's a, a digital recording device that will play back up to five minutes worth of audio. All you've got to do is plug this into your um, USB port on your computer, program it with the sound files you want, there are four buttons, up to five minutes worth of audio can come out of this. So, in the next video, I'm going to build this kit, show you how to do it, and I'm going to show you how this sound unit works. Now, if you don't want to mess around, trying to find everything and do it yourself, I will sell you both kits for cheaper than you can buy any of the other kits. Both kits, 40 bucks. Think about it. And if you can't build them, don't know how to build them, or are afraid to build them, I'll build them for you. I told you guys I was gonna teach you electronics, show you how to do it, and if I can't make you do it, if you can't do it, I will do it for you, for a fee, but it won't be 150 bucks.